Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone. I am Claire Jones. If we haven't already met, I am the owner of Liminal Clarity. I am a productivity expert and change guide for growth for women visionaries, entrepreneurs, executives who basically want support and stability during times of change, stress, and or transformation. So I am jumping on today to talk about how to optimize your potential customer touch points in order to efficiently streamline your time, money, and energy as a busy entrepreneur. So if you are catching me live or you're watching the replay, please say hello, comment below, tell us where you're tuning in from and what your favorite way to build business relationships is. So before I get into the nitty gritty though, I wanted to include a caveat here. I do have 15 plus years of small business experience and first embarked on my own entrepreneurial journey back in 2014. And every single week, I get questions from my audiences and networks asking for advice on all kinds of systems, strategies, and softwares. I am the productivity queen, and people <laughs> seek me out for that. So I am more than happy to point them in the right direction, but, and this is a big but here, whatever systems, strategies, or softwares that you choose to use in your business are only as effective as the internal personal development work that you choose to do. Because at the end of the day, personal development is business development. So if you're interested in chatting more about this, book a call with me. I'll put the link in the comments here. It'll be in the description on YouTube as well. But all right, let's ask, how exactly did I learn the importance of having an intentional touch points strategy? So a lot of people think that if they just build a website open up a brick and mortar that customers will show up. I've definitely fallen into that trap before with my first business that was a general store devoted to local goods. I set up the website, I set up the brick and mortar space, I put my sign out on the sidewalk and waited for the masses to come. <laughs> but guess what, they didn't. Uh, you know, I had the cart, but I didn't really have the horse. Sure, I got a few sales from people who just happened upon my store, either online or in person, but it wasn't consistent and it definitely wasn't enough to keep my business open. And it wasn't until I started seeking out other business advisors that they told me about this thing called networking. I was like, what do you mean I have to go talk to people? What do you mean I need social support circles? <laughs> I am an only child of divorced parents living thousands of miles away from home. And so I had always done things myself. I hadn't really learned that I needed to develop relationships in order to help my business and my life ultimately succeed. That's the importance of touch points right there. You need to give people multiple chances to grow, to know, like, and trust you over time because at the end of the day, it's not a sales funnel, it's a trust funnel. Is this calling to you? I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of you out there. So if you're interested in chatting more about life and business and all that it entails, I am opening up three spaces to the women go-getters out there who wanna have more fun and less stress while achieving their big goals. So the link is in the comments if you're interested. So let's get into the nitty gritty with touch points. So when it comes to marketing strategies, what we're talking about here is intentionally and strategically building that know, like, and trust factor with your audiences over time. Because there are so many options out there nowadays for products and services, chances are you are not the only one who offers what you're offering. You are always going to have competitors. They are probably, there are probably at least a dozen other businesses out there who are offering the same, if not very similar products and services that you do. So why is the potential customer going to choose you over everyone else? You might be the cheapest option. You might be the scientifically proven option. You might be the longest lasting option. But at the end of the day, they're going to choose you over everyone else because they know, like, and trust you. Not because your product or service has the best features. It is very irrational, I know. You'd think that people would make rational decisions about what products and services provide them with the biggest, most beneficial benefits. But that's not how our brains work, unfortunately. People will go to great lengths to support and buy from the people that they know, like, and trust. We're all human. We are evolutionarily wired to seek social connection and our brains just prefer the people that we already know, like, and trust. 
So how can you intentionally and strategically use that to make sales? This is where an intentional, strategic, and consistent touch point strategy comes into play. So the most common rule of thumb when it comes to the number of touch points that you need in order to engage a customer is 16 touch points. As a rule of thumb, it's a pretty solid rule of thumb. But I believe, like most generalizations, that it leaves the nuances unexplored. So if you want a little more depth and a little more strategy, I invite you to check out Jeb Blunt's book, Fanatical Prospecting. This is one of my Bibles when it comes to marketing and touch points and business relationships. It's a great book if you haven't checked it out already. It has some really juicy information about how to consistently, strategically, and intentionally build relationships with your audiences. He comes from a more traditional corporate sales background, but he so he is most familiar with sales call centers, insurance sales, software sales, stuff like that. But I think his advice is very useful for businesses of all sizes and in all fields, because what we're really looking at here is how to build that know, like, and trust factor with your audiences. So he has done a ton of research on this and he has figured out how many touch points it takes to engage various customers. And so, for example, we're gonna start at the bottom. If you are engaging a cold prospect, someone who doesn't know who you are, doesn't know that you're existing, doesn't know your brand, doesn't know anything about your business, your products, your services, you need to create 20 to 50 touch points before they will engage with you and your products and services. Now, touch points can be anything from commenting on their Facebook posts to meeting them in person at a networking event to sending them an email to talking to them on the phone. And you need to, a lot of touch points in order to build this no like, and trust factor over time. So if you are consistently engaging or interacting with a cold prospect every other day, for example, it can take up to 100 days to engage that cold prospect. That's the power of having a consistent and deliberate touch points strategy. If you are engaging with a prospect who has a little bit of familiarity with you and your brand, maybe they've seen a couple of your posts here and there, maybe they saw an ad once, then it takes five to 20 touch points. And that's when it's buying window dependent meaning that they may or may not be in the buying window at this moment and may or may not be actively looking around for a product or service that's similar to yours. So even if you do have a warm inbound lead, meaning that people know, like, and trust you enough to come to you and ask you about your services, it still takes five to 12 touch points in order to engage them. This means that they are actively seeking you out it is a person who is actively interested in your offerings enough to come and ask you about them. It still takes five to 12 touch points in order to engage them. Narrowing down even further, it takes three to 10 touches to engage a prospect who has a high degree of familiarity with you or your brand, but it is not in the buying window. That's the power of branding, really. So this means that a prospective customer has already grown to know, like, and trust you. They have a high degree of familiarity with you and your brain brand, but they are not buying right now. Even if they are not interested in buying from you at this moment, it still takes less touch points to engage them on average than it would to take to engage a warm inbound lead someone who is actively asking you about your products and services, who is presumably already in the buying window, but is not as highly familiar with you. That's the wild thing about marketing. People will go to great lengths to support and buy from the people that they know, like, and trust, even if they don't even want the product that you're selling. <laughs> they will buy it just to support you because they like you. We are all human. We are all evolutionarily wired for social connections and our brains just prefer the people that we already know, like, and trust. So even if they're not in the buying window, they're not looking for a product or service that's similar to yours, but they like you, they're more likely to buy from you than a warm inbound lead. Isn't that crazy? So 
before because once you jump to a potential customer who has a high degree of familiarity with you and your brand and is in the buying window it only takes one to five touch points to engage them so this means that they probably are already looking for options they have already done a few searches online they have already gone to a few stores they've already talked to a few people they are looking for what kind of options are out there and they are actively looking to buy a solution to their problem plus they are also highly familiar with you and your business already they already know like and trust you maybe they follow you on instagram maybe they follow you on facebook maybe they're signed up for your newsletter maybe you see them often at networking events or at your kids soccer practice Whatever the touch points are, they already know what your business offers and they are in the buying window. So they are actively looking for solutions similar to what you offer. In this case, it only takes one to five touch points to engage them. And then finally, in order to re-engage an inactive customer, someone who has already bought from you in the past, it takes one to three touches. Maybe they bought from you three months ago. Maybe it was five years ago. It still takes one to five, one to three touch points on average in order to re-engage them. So what do these touch points look like? It can look like email campaigns. It can look like newsletters, phone calls. Maybe you wanna call them and check in with how they're doing. Maybe you want to send them a follow-up email and ask for a product or service review. Find out how they're liking their products that they bought from you. Maybe find out if they want more. So that's pretty much the different levels of touch points. So let's go over them one last time, starting at the bottom. It takes 20 to 50 touches to engage a cold prospect who does not know you or your brand, five to 20 touches to engage a prospect who has some familiarity with you and your brand, buying window dependent, five to 12, touches to engage a warm inbound lead, three to 10 to engage a prospect who has a high degree of familiarity with you and your brand, but is not in the buying window, one to five to engage a prospect who is in the buying window and is familiar with you and your brand, and one to three touches to engage a inactive and inactive customer. So how do we track these touch points over time? With a solid CRM system or customer relationship manager. I've been talking about this a little bit with people over the last week, and there are a ton of different software options available for CRMs. But my favorite is Airtable because it is highly customizable and it is a Zapier product. And so it integrates seamlessly with a ton of different integrations and softwares. It can be used for project management, workflow automations, forms, calendars, Kanban boards, information management, database management, and or sales pipelines. Just think of it as a hub of your software wheel. So it's in the center and all of your other software applications are connected to it. So they can all feed into it using the Zapier integrations. So you can easily connect all of your various applications to each other. It is a total game changer. So that's pretty much what I wanted to go over today. If you're interested in learning more or if you have specific questions for me, please book a call. I'd be happy to help you out. Let's talk about the best way to get you on track, focused, and in devoting your time appropriately to these types of activities that will empower you to achieve your goals with a lot more ease and joy. So we can use a multidisciplinary approach that will help you reach and maintain peak performance, even in times of change, stress, or transformation. So. I can't wait to support you. I'm looking forward to it. So in the meantime, please join me for more Facebook Lives. I'll be doing a deeper dive into each of these areas and providing practical tips, tools, and recommendations over the next coming weeks. And then I'll be jumping on next week to talk about content creation for your various platforms. And until then, please remember that your authentic self is extraordinary. It is wonderful. And you owe it to yourself to create the elevated life that you know you are capable of. Take care, everyone.